I'm play dead. Come. Well, I guess you can introduce yourself. All right. I'm Matthew T.C. Bush. You know, I'm 34 years old. You know, I've been breeding dogs a long time. From time I was a kid, I've always had dogs. You know, my father, he was a German Shepherd enthusiast. We always had all kind of dogs in our yard, so I was drilled up in the dog game. You know, let's assume that Romolo chose to do the first interview with because he you knows, say, you know, somebody that's been in the game a long time. I mean, this happens to be the Machiavelli line 20, 20th anniversary. You know, Machiavelli line strong from 1999. Now we're in 2019, 20 years in the game. Get over to Romolo now as the interviewer. First question What got you into breeding dogs? Growing up. I've always had dogs, like I said, up until I was about 13 or 14 years old. It was always German Shepherds in the yard, Dalmatian, Pigonies, Rottweiler, Doberman, Sharpies. We had a bunch of different breeds, Cocker Spaniels, but German Shepherds were like the main stick. I really saw all kind of dogs. Uh, I was around dog people for a long time, from the time I was small. And what I used to see, like really crude lines used to get, they would grow up. They would die off and uh, you would never see puppies off them lines and people would be talking about like yeah i remember when they had this dog and i remember when they had this dog and i was always like you know what if i ever start breeding dogs i gotta make sure that you know you keep the lines going when people say i remember this dog that never produced nothing and is gone no 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 I mean, when they say i remember that dog i remember machiavelli yeah machiavelli great granddaughter still in my yard I wanted to continue the lines and the, the great dogs because came I never had access to all kind of awesome dogs but we've had one or two three or four great dogs come through and I would like to have seen more of them lines continue on and I want to be a part of that that's what really going on for breeding. Name some of the dogs you still breed to this day. Well Nelly right now is a third generation Machiavelli line she's having puppies. I got Sparta she's a third generation Bulletproof line, she's having puppies. You know, I would like to breed Blitzy when she wear it. And she's fourth generation Machiavelli line. I mean, you know, I'm creating lines and other of my lines that are still out there being used. Bulletproof line that I created with Chisel, who I still got right over there. Chisel and Kuma, right her, created Gaza, bred to Caesar, created Indica, you used to breed with Vicious, Vicious. created Astro and Baby in them. Baby created Chester, Chester created Harley, Harley created the little that she got now. You know, I mean, the fact that I was there in three generations of that, my lines are out there in plenty of different people lines, even though they might not really realize it, but it's still going strong. What are your thoughts on the local line now in Cayman? When you say the local line? Well, local bullies and bulldogs we have now. All right. Because all of, you know, all of them, they might be different breeds, but they all come from the same stock, yeah. in a sense. Yeah, as far as bullies and bulldogs are concerned. It goes back generations. Some of the lines do go back just as almost as old as I am. Some of them go back even older than me. But then some of them are fresh, brand new to the island. This is the thing that gets me with a lot of people when they say, I'm breeding to import. I'm breeding to import. Every dog that comes Cayman has been imported. You know what I'm saying? After two or three generations of breeding in Cayman, it's localized. So when you say you breed into an import line, that's an import line that's fresh. But after two or three generations, it's now a Cayman line, right? I mean, that's my opinion on it because that's how every dog that has ever bred in Cayman has been. <laughs> the local line, in my opinion, seeing how they descend from all these import lines that or combined I think they're doing pretty good it's the people who breed them in the directions they go me personally I don't like inbreeding my dogs too tightly and every generation I would like to outbreed to something fresh something fresh something fresh then maybe do a inbreeding and something fresh something fresh something fresh then do an inbreeding when you're going up the tree like that if anything this is it <laughs> coming right there, Lo and behold, here comes my breeding program partner Marshano you know, he helped yes. me get into it. In the past four or five years, maybe five or six years, the injection of Grand Champion Line Bulldogs. Because when Jed went states, he bred with Grand Champion Lines and brought down Grand Champion Lines. 
the injection of those blood like Max, Rambo, Zeus, Zeus, Ares. Uh, Duke, Duke of Zeus. So. Duke. Uh, All these dogs are descended from Grand Champion lines. So injecting those lines into our local pit lines and local bully lines, I think really helped improve if you're going in the direction of bully or bulldog, really helped improve those lines. So right now I'm very interested in seeing the future of the Cayman Bullies and Cayman Bulldogs. How old were you when you started in the dog game? Well, like I say, my first personal dog was Machiavelli. I got him in 1999 when I was 15. I was 15 years old. But he was in my, I had dogs before that that were breeding in my yard and stuff that, you know, I was very responsible for as well. But as to say, my own first dog that I got, that I chose who he bred to, and I take care of the puppies, and I sold the puppies and all that. Yes, Machiavelli was my first dog. But I had Asha, who was off a world grand champion, Sharpe, bred to a pit bull. Jade, who was a quarter wolf, Macho, who was a German Shepherd, so many freaking dogs. Boo. This one that I had all kind of dogs. That was back then. That was leading up to me getting Machiavelli, who was my pit bull cross Rockweiler. And I was like, yeah, this is my dog. Got him in high school. You know, sold into my sold puppies off into my classmates, you know. They had dogs. Machiavelli was a grand champion in his own right. That was all long ago, back in my starting up days as a child. But it's what Joe taught him papers, <laughs> paper and dogs. Well, pertaining into the Cayman Islands. In my opinion, when it comes to papers versus non-paper dogs, you know, realistically speaking, you also have to take into fact it's a breed thing too, because. Their breeds. Well, all right. Let's let, let me just say this: all dogs are mutts. <laughs> like they say at the beginning, the only full breed is the wolf. When you come to having bullies, especially these American bullies, and oh, I have a papered American bully by the ABKC. Why do you have an ABKC? Because the AKC and the UKC didn't want to give them man papers, so they created their own kind of club. To paper their dogs. There are plenty of dogs that have pedigrees and stuff that go way beyond American bullies and the bully breeds that we have today that for this interviews pertaining to. When it comes to American bullies and any bully breed in general in Cayman and oh my dog has papers and your dog doesn't have papers, is my dog better than yours? Of course not because I've seen with my own two eyes in the states plenty of dog shows whatever and there's barn house backyard breed dogs that come out way better than any paper dog and can work way better and do things way better and you down on the point i'm talking about beautiful healthy friendly do work everything them paper dogs a lot of that is just ig fucking some filters and apps and shit making half them dogs photo, pretty when you go fucking see them in real life they don't look like that fucking shit first off but papers don't really mean a fucking shit paper all that means is that you're paying that kennel up there money to be a part of them that don't mean that your dog is integrated in anything else that just means you as the owner or the breeder is paying that kennel that you getting the papers from to be a part of that kennel that's all that paper means doesn't mean that your dog is any better than anybody else dog. that's my opinion on paper what about supplements and stuff for dogs what do you think me personally i don't use no supplements or anything other than regular vitamins I can get and most of the time with the dog food I use I try to get the green free because yeah some breeds don't like the corn and stuff and some breeds they need more protein but as far as boosting up your dog on all of this fucking all kind of fucking shit I see I'm giving them and pumping them up and pumping them up and then take them off that for a couple of months and see how they look I mean what is your dog if it don't have all that juice my dogs, all I giving them is dog food and they gonna be looking the same way. You take one of them pumped up dogs home and give them dog food, they gonna change how the dog look. It don't look like that pumped up dog no more. And not gonna produce that pumped up look. I don't believe in that shit. And furthermore, it's bad for the dog. How long them dogs live? Five, six years at tops? Three years. Don't even have to call out my names and be like, boy, that dog did that dog because I heard about this dog that better than my dog that right there. But he did. <laughs> anyway. 
put her holding down right. to be Tories if they just still throwing back kings. False, that's false. So how how they gonna be? Still throwing back kings. Don't have no fucking idea on what airs like will that. be. The fucking the, the the set for the air is crop. Yeah. How crop going to be? Yeah, your go to for air. Isn't the air supposed to be flop? Rose, rose, standing. All kind of different shapes for ears. Okay, Your fucking true. set is cropped. All breeds should be short in a natural state. I would natural? assume so. Most breeds, all breeds should be short in a natural state. Ears, oh. whatever ears, they got whatever, you know what I mean? Hmm. But that, that proves what type of dog was mixed into the dogs that you know exactly. Yeah, okay. Some of the bullies you see that don't got croppings, got stick up ears and look just like Frenchies. I mean, in my opinion, American bully. It's a bastardized breed and name of a breed. That is put that is, that name has been fucked up to the point where they add it to every fucking thing that comes out. You know what I'm It's like, oh yeah, this reindeer over here is an American bully. And then this fucking toad right here, this is an American bully as well. They're both American bullies. This is different. I mean, how the fuck? How, how come how come one breed can look? <laughs> There's one breed, but then they got so much different looks. They got different I mean, classes. A different look. A bulldog, one a bulldog, breed got five a bulldog looks like a bulldog. Right now, we got five classes, right? Or, yeah. or are there more now? They yeah. got extreme, standard, excels, um, classic, and yeah, exotic. Do they really class them? Because you know, they but can't some, be show dogs. There's a whole bunch of shows that do but, call but they, you they are calling them bullies. They are all called bullies. This was yeah. it. The name has been bastardized as yeah. well as the breed. Because the original breed was that dude what Dave yeah, Dave, Dave Wilson Dave Wilson breed. And he started and that was just was supposed to be American Pit Bull cross American and Star. Star. And them two breeds could never in a million years create the fucking breeds that they have now. Simple as that. This is the same thing I try and show people with let's say Rottweiler breeds and Rottweiler lines. The original German Rottweiler lines had a look. When they got over to the States Bred them with a couple of other dogs, maybe Dobermans, maybe even a little shepherd got in there. And it got changed the look, got another look. People in Russia got them and bred them with some maybe boxers. And and mastiffs. And maybe Mastiffs and, yeah. and changed the look and they got another look. People in Germany then, probably got all them, combine them up. But when you go back to Germany, it always comes back with a better look than what everybody else got anyway. So, and that's how it works with any breed. Any breed starts off in one place, and once it starts getting exported to other places, other mixed. countries, they do other things with it, but still want to retain the breed name. So they might change a couple things on the papers here and there. No, the grandparent wasn't a bulldog. The grandparent was a Rottweiler, just had a real bully look. Bullshit, but you know, they put that in the papers just to keep it legit. And you know, I mean, in sales my opinion, too. Uh, people don't want hair to mix them. They want hair full breed. That that's for just, sales. But that's such a stupid thing. This whole thing about full breed, full breed. No dog is full breed. And the more fuller breed your dog is, all that means more inbred it is. What you want more inbred dog for? Theoretically, I can understand. Yes, you want to keep a line pure and keep a line producing consistency. I guess that is the whole idea of full breed. You can't keep throwing and throwing in different lines all the way down the generations because you will change up the looks. With each generation, you're going to have a new look each time. So you're never going to get consistency. You have to mix up the part F1 to F4, G1 to G6, then that got to be going for consistency, consistency. You can't be changing back and forth between breeds at them points. But as far as in breeding, that, that's why when it comes to creating a breed, you won't have a lot of people doing the same thing as you. You know, creating the same breeds as you. That you can still say, all right, I go check that person for a breed later on. Because, you know, he has a bulldog, pit bull. I got an American bulldog, bull mastiff. Breed the two of them. Bam. That's for old days and bulldogs. <laughs> as far as bullies go, this is the thing with American bullies. It's just so, people do so crazy, stupid breedings. One man got a short, fat bully. Next man got a tall, skinny bully. And they could breed them to help each other. <laughs> I mean, I thought you were going to try to keep it short and fat, or I thought one was going to try to keep it tall and skinny. And I don't, in Cayman at least, you hardly, rarely see people doing sensible breedings with American bullets. They cross classes, and I don't, I don't see nobody sticking to like any standards. Thus far. I'm gonna talk about her. This chisel, Nitro. 
That's the original, but this is where all the breeds started. Chisel born probably around 2010. Her mommy is off of Paige and Mac, and her father was off of Paige and Chancho, who was Emmett. They were both owned by the twins, Dwight and Dwayne. What do you say her name is? Blitzen. Who she offer? Blitzen is off of Nelly and Ram Page. Nelly is off of Prada. Prada is off of Machiavelli. Machiavelli is off of what fella named Jesse Art, original big old Rottweiler he brought down from Germany. But then his Machiavelli mommy is a Shaka. Yeah, Maybe I hear about Shaka. Her daughter, so. daughter. And Shaka came from Noriega as well. Noriega came from a Rottweiler again. Okay, this is Mussolini, aka Mussolini Boy Boy, third generation Machiavelli line. He has German Rottweiler, Italian Rottweiler, and a little bit of American Rottweiler mixed in with a touch of Cuban pit and some of the original Paul line, the golden red nose pits. Mussolini is off of Prada and Chapo. Prada is off of Machiavelli and Chapo came from Chad from Mikey Finelli bred his male that he imported from Italy to Tyrone and Matthew Smith female that they brought down from the States. This is Nelly. She's also about to have puppies. Nelly is a third generation Machiavelli line rot. She comes from Prada and Chapo. Prada is her deem. Prada is her mother. Chapo is her sire, her father. Chapo was Chad's dog. He came off of Mikey Finelli's male that he imported from Italy, bred to Taron Smith and Matthew Smith's female that was an American import or off an American import. This is Roxby. She's a terrible little thing. Monstrous. Back end look great, front end look great. You know, works like a beast full of drive, great lock, great bite. She's a F2 Cayman Bulldog, quarter bull mastiff, half English Bulldog, quarter Cayman Bully. The Cayman Bully, what she have in her, is from the Bulletproof line. Who her parents are? Her parents are Sparta, which is off of Athena, and Nebulon. Nebulon come from um, Orville. She's a giant mastiff, bull mastiff. Athena comes from the Bulletproof mix, which was chief for the Timex line. Bred to Kaya. Kaya from the Ghost line. For her um, sire is? Her sire is Tank. She's a full breed English Bulldog. He also comes from the champion line that are found in Cayman. She comes from Chisel, as you saw earlier. And, um, a little tag bit of the time as well. You see the muscle stature she got. Great little dog. I tried breeding her with Zeus. A English bulldog. And on her first breed she miscarriage. Ended up getting her speed. This is Xena. She's a F2 came on bulldog. She's off a of Yago, bred by Marshano. 345 crafted bullies, bulldogs. And her mother name is Visa, who was brought in from Jam. This is Greece. Who's also off of Sparta? Half Rottweiler, four bull four Cayman Her father is Denzel, a Rottweiler owned by Sylvia. That has the pet bar. With her, to me, she is more with Greece. We plan on doing like an alternate Cayman Bulldog line. See how one line is. English Bulldog, Pitbull Bull Mastiff, American Bulldog. She has that Rottweiler blood in there. Instead of breeding her with a Bulldog, I'm thinking breeding her with something as Bull, but maybe not an English Bulldog, you know?